So, John, what is the most elaborate plan that you've tried, not necessarily succeeded in, to get somebody to bed? Hmm. Started a podcast with them? Oh, easy answer. <laughs> easy answer. <laughs> Playing the long game. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, can't, can't wait. Some films are fine, just the way they are. Other films sometimes take it way too far. Welcome everybody to Beyond the Box Set, the podcast where today we are picturing prequels, sequels and spin-offs to Hitch. We'll also be picturing some drinking games and hearing from our listeners with the submissions they've posted on Facebook and Twitter. But first we're going to talk about some of our favourite moments and do a bit of a plot summary. I am Harry, the host with the most, bang for my buck. What does that even mean? If you count that one time in Amsterdam. Oh, okay. <laughs> and joining me as always, the host whose closest comparison is his landlord getting him a mattress for all the action he's getting. Oh, I see, buying book. Look, there's a lockdown on. <laughs> Cut me some slack. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, it's John Lucas. Hello. Hello. So, Hitch. Hitch, yes. To continue our season of the pursuit of happiness. This, yeah, you're very proud of that for something that you had absolutely no part in creating. <laughs> hey, I lo- did you listen to the Weekly Planet? No, no. I did. So okay, I had right. some part in bringing it here. Sure, yeah, yeah. So you, you did have the idea. They just had the idea first. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. That's happened many times in my life. I know. Yeah. I had the idea for the iMac. <laughs> um, I had the idea for a phone with two headphone jacks. Smartphones mm-hmm. went in the opposite direction. Uh-huh. And I also invented division. Division, really? Yeah. What, as, the as mathematical... It, I, like, yeah, the mathematical operator. Yeah, I, I, I thought of that before I found out it was already a thing. Oh, damn, just just the 10,000 years too late on that one. <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah, that was nearly my moment. Mm. I was going to be a four-year-old billionaire. I mean, I don't know if you could become a billionaire now based on inventing a way to do maths. Like, how, how would you monetize that in this day and age? I, I, I don't know. A, a smarter person would know. Sure, well, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> So this film, yeah, uh, I chose this, yeah, because I actually hadn't seen it until mm-hmm. this week. Really? Yeah. No, never. No, it wasn't really my bag. But I remember it being out. You didn't see what Wild Wild West, did you? No, my Will Smith like experience is relatively thin, to be honest. I've seen the Men in Black films. It was re- relatively franchise based. Said so, that you hadn't seen Independence Day, which we're about to do on our bonus show. True, true, true. Yeah, there's a lot of Will Smith I've not seen. I have seen a few. Obviously, Men in Black, the first one, was mm. a big part of my childhood. Mm-hmm. I have seen. I robot a few times, which mm-hmm. we may or may not do. I don't know if you're planning mm-hmm. on. I wasn't particularly in a rush to do it again, but yeah, we could, it, it's it's potential. And I've seen I Am Legend, so mm-hmm. I've seen a few. But yeah, a lot of his films fall into that franchisey fate, like that kind of the kind of franchisey films that, unless we went to see them, I would probably not generally really bother with. Yeah, like, they don't really excite me that much. Yeah, and when this came out, I was just like, this doesn't. This looks fine, but it does not look like it's for me. Mm-hmm. But I thought it'd be worth doing because it is Will Smith's only rom com, mm-hmm. which is quite surprising, really. Yeah. But it's the only one he's done, and it was. Well, I guess that he thinks of himself as being above that. Well, if you that... look at the the kind of films that he does, he's he's not really a rom com kind of guy. He's not Hugh Grant, is he? No, but then uh, there are reasons as well why he doesn't do more rom coms, which we can talk about in a little bit that kind of feed into the, how this film was made. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was a huge success though. Mm-hmm. Like it was massive, massive hit over. $350 million worldwide. Wow, okay. Um, and, you know, on a rom-com budget, that's especially impressive. Mm. I'm sure the main cost was getting him to be in it. And after <laughs> that, it was just all gravy. Yeah. Yeah, so I just thought, you know, after last week looking at a notable Will Smith disaster, mm-hmm. let's look at a, a notable Will Smith success. Mm-hmm. So what about you? Have, you? have you seen this before? Yeah, I'd seen it before, so I kind of remembered it as it was happening. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I remembered the majority of it already, but, yeah, there were just so many little bits... Um, I would. I can't imagine. Just like the kind of oh, this is the bit where he, he's about to kick her in the face. Yeah, Stuff I can't like imagine that. the kind of film that really sticks in your mind that strongly. It's pretty. No. It's fine, but it's pretty run of the mill yeah. in many ways. You know? Yeah, yeah. But what did you think? Um, this film is insane. It's. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yeah, it, it, it makes it, it makes some interesting choices. It yeah. really like. Well, go on. Tell me more. What you thought? I just. I, I don't know, it just it just really makes you think, mm-hmm. this one, about how hard it is to get a date. Yeah. That's clearly what they were going for. Yeah. And uh, it gets a lot of things wrong, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, you know, <laughs> as, as, you know as, a, as a straight man, was this a film that you could strongly relate to in terms of its 
I wouldn't say strongly. It's not easy to ask a girl out on a date. Mm-hmm. And that is why films like this exist. Oh, sure, yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you one guess as to what kind of person wrote this film. Oh, yeah. It's certainly a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> certainly a man who has struggled to get many dates in his time. Yes. And, like, that's totally a thing, but uh, this film takes such a weird spin on it. It's really walking... And, 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 and like, it, it only really touches on on that issue that, like, you know, it's hard to get a date and if somebody says no for any reason... It, it just feels like a personal attack, even if everything's above board and, you know, yeah. everybody's just being good to each other. If somebody says, oh, no, sorry, I'm not interested in you, mm. you're always going to think, like, well, what's wrong with me? Why aren't you interested in me? Oh, <laughs> Well, no, that's how, that's how it goes, isn't it? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this film kind of, uh, it more gets to it in the, uh, near the end about how it's just a major problem for for a lot of men and kind of is mm-hmm. and you know I, I guess it does contribute to a negative mental health mm-hmm. but yeah this one kind of depicts it as like hey it's all men and women are the problem because they're never accepting of men yeah th- this film walks a really weird like tightrope on like being just a full kind of incel film yeah it doesn't um, it yeah <laughs> and it's really it's trying like that it's it's hearts in the right place in a lot of ways mm-hmm. but there's some very weird points of view put across that yeah and, and some interesting things that they don't really talk about which make it even more Interesting. The main one, which I think is the ultimate decider mm-hmm. um, as to whether the behaviour in this film is good or not. Mm. You know, it's meant well, definitely. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give them that. But whether it's whether it's good behaviour, it's absolutely not. Because, well, firstly, there's all there's all the lies that everybody's telling, you know. Yeah. like The whole thing um, is based on deception, yeah. Yeah, it's like deceiving a woman into thinking that you've done this big romantic gesture for her so that she'll mm. fall in love with you and you... And, you know, you get together and live happily ever after. Yeah. Which, by the way, is not how... Not just how women work. It's not how people work. No. Um, but it's how rom-coms work. It is how rom-coms work. I'll definitely give you that. Yeah. But the reason why you can tell that all this is wrong is because none of the people who are doing it want to admit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody yeah. wants to admit... Not even Will Smith, who fully believes in what he's doing. Mm. He won't tell any women that that's what he's doing. No. Which clearly means that he believes that it's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So the whole the whole big monologue that he does at the end, where he's like, "Well, this is what I do," and you know, I, I make people find love and stuff like that. Well, okay. Well, if it's all so good, why don't you tell people about it? Because yeah. it sounds great. Yeah, uh, particularly the first ten minutes of this film mm. are very problematic. Like, yeah, it basically opens with like. If a woman says she's not interested, she's lying. Try harder. Try harder, yeah. <laughs> no means maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's bad. Yeah. And what else does he say? Like, no woman ever wakes up and thinks, today I hope I don't get swept off my feet. Yeah. It's like, w- women are just walking around waiting for guys. To, like, but, but women don't think that, that I want to get swept off my feet every single day. No, exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's, that's not how things work. And it just opens with this whole batch of lies. Like, mm-hmm. So Will Smith's character is... I a, mean, it's thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah, it's 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 a very watchable film. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it is very much a film. Like, if you want to look at a film and say, okay, why is Will Smith a movie star? What makes Will Smith mm-hmm. different from any guy on the street who might mm-hmm. be in a film? It, the fact that he can make this work mm-hmm. and be less creepy than it could have been in any yeah. almost anyone else's hands. Yeah, it really reminded me. There's a Tom Cruise film from the '90s called Magnolia, mm-hmm. which I flirted with doing before, but. Maybe one day. It's it's from the same guy who did Boogie Nights. Mm-hmm. And it's very good, but it's very long. Right. But in Boogie Nights, Tom Cruise plays a in similar... In Magnolia. In Magnolia, sorry. Not in Boogie Nights. In Magnolia, <laughs> Tom Cruise plays a kind of similar character to this, but he's fully played as a villain. Right. right? It's a okay. dating expert who's all about how to deceive women into bed. Mm. But it's, it's not light and fluffy at all. He's monstrous. Yeah. And that did make me think, like, yeah, if this film, if this film Hitch mm. had starred someone like Tom Cruise, mm. it would be a nightmare. Mm-hmm. They would not work. No. Like, there are very, very few actors who can make this material somewhat charming. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's the whole, the secret of being a rom-com star. Yeah. You know, which is a, a different talent to being any other kind of actor. So, yeah. yeah. Which makes it weird that he's not done more, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's that's true. Um, at the start, you said you were going to say why he didn't do more. Oh, okay, yeah. So this is kind of a bummer, to be honest. Mm. The reason Will Smith doesn't do more rom-coms, presumably, he told a story about, as well as starring in this, he also produced it. Right. And so he's, he's done interviews and he's talked about how the reason they cast Ava Mendes as the love interest was 
they didn't want to cast a black actress mm -hmm. because then it would just be a quote unquote black film and they felt white people wouldn't come and see it. Right, it would just okay. be like, this is a niche film for black people. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to cast a white woman mm -hmm. because that doesn't test well. Mm -hmm. Black men and white women on screen together, audiences don't like. Right. So the compromise was a Latina woman. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that a lot in, in a lot of films with black men in, in particular. Mm -hmm. They'll usually, whether it's an action film or a rom-com, if their love interest isn't also black, mm -hmm. they'll probably be some other ethnicity but white. They'll usually mm -hmm. be Latina. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I guess that's why, because the, that kind of limits what Will Smith mm -hmm. can do rom-com-wise. He's not going to get put in a lot of the rom-coms that get made because mm -hmm. they're like for quote-unquote white people. Yeah. And so it's like a very white... It's either a white thing or it's a niche black movie, yeah. which is ridiculous and terrible mm -hmm. and depressing. But that is basically why that, that's kind of the thought process. Even if you're a big star on Will Smith's level, like Will Smith, I'm sure he could have sold this. I'm sure it would have been a success with a white actress in, in mm -hmm. Ava Mendes as well. But the studio is just like, even if you're at Will Smith's level, you still have to think about that shit, which mm -hmm. is very depressing. Mm, but, yeah. That's probably why he doesn't do more of them, but... Yeah, yeah, uh, I I see the sense and why he's not doing any more. Yeah, exactly, because who wants to jump through all that bullshit? Yeah. yeah, it was actually supposed to be uh, Jennifer Lopez, but she turned it down. Yeah, imagine sense. that would have worked very well. Like Ava Mendes is great in this film. Mm. J Lo would have been better. That would have been a yeah. great like star pairing. Yeah, but wasn't to be. Yeah, yeah. Well. but uh, anyway, so that's why. Uh, but no, so this this you know it, it still worked. Like I said, it made a lot of money. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shall I get into a bit of plot summary action? Yeah, go for it. Cool. So this film, Hitch, came out around 2005? Yeah, 2005, I think. 2006, I think. 2006, okay. That mm. that era, you know. And it stars Will Smith as... What's his first name? Is it just Hitch? I mean, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. He's Hitch. And Hitch... No, because his surname is Hitchens. Hitchens. So it's not Hitch Hitchens, no. no. <laughs> I, I want to say Alex, but I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know. You, you, you keep talking. I'll look it up. Just okay, fine. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter at all. No, it does not. So, Will Smith, he, in this film, plays a dating expert. Mm-hmm. The date doctor. The date doctor. And his specialty seems <laughs> to be... Doctor. The date doctor. His specialty seems to be working with lonely men, mm -hmm. helping them to improve their dating kind of game. Helping them to get to the third date with mm. the women that they're in love with. Yeah. That they're obsessed with, basically. Yeah. And it starts with this whole... The first ten minutes is probably the worst part of the movie. <laughs> when I was like, oh god, this film's a nightmare. <laughs> Where it just shows him with all of these exclusively older men. Mm -hmm. All, like, obsessed with these much younger and much more, like, conventionally attractive women. Mm -hmm. And it's all just, like... Well, it opens with a monologue where Will Smith says, if she says no, she means she's she's lying, she means try harder, and it's like, yeah. oh, God, this is so rapey and awful. Yeah. Like, this is the thing, some of the advice he gives is actually good advice. Mm. Like, he says, listen to her, pay attention to her, mm -hmm. don't just stare at her boobs, don't just think about what you're going to do when you get her in bed, mm. pay attention to what she's saying. And that's actually very good advice. Yeah. That's not yeah. in any way offensive. Like, that's a good way for men to think about yeah. trying to build relationships with women. But it's still comes from this place of deception. Mm -hmm. Like, the opening one, for example, one of the things he does is he... It shows him acquiring a puppy from somewhere. Y yeah, you never see that dog again. No, no, no. Where did he get the puppy from? Like, how, is, <laughs> how much is he spending on all of this? Yeah. Getting a puppy I to... mean, he's clearly making loads as well. Yeah, you see he... that apartment? Well, yeah, well, we'll get to the apartments, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> her apartment, yeah. But yeah, he, the, in one, for example, he, he gets a puppy to tempt another dog out of an elevator mm. while it's closing. So the owner of the dog it panics, runs out, and then the guy who is in love with the dog owner, mm. he's holding the dog and he's kind of pretending he's like, save the dog from oncoming traffic. Yeah. And she's so grateful, they go for a coffee and then they have sex and then they get, end up getting married. Yeah. It's the, And that's like the layer of deception in this film that he seems yeah. to be operating at. It's like, he's helping them to put them in situations to make the women feel more inclined towards liking them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, he's not making women fall in love with anybody. He's not forcing women to do anything. And he's very, like... Yeah, and the, but the film really, like, walks that tightrope. Because like, there's a scene later on when a guy actually says out loud, I want you to help me bang this woman. Is yeah. the word he uses. Yeah. Uh, and he's very... He's like, excuse me, I'm very offended. That is not what I do. That is not what I do. And it's, yeah. it's like, it kind of is, though. Like, it kind of is, yeah, but... It pretty much is. He's, he's basically get... He says, I will get you to the front door on the third date. Yeah. Which is, you know, short of hiring yeah. a prostitute, how much further, you know... 
Yeah, I guess. So he, he is doing that, but he just can't say he's doing Or he won't admit that he's doing that, basically. And if a guy just says that... Well, I, th- I think that... Yeah, Will Smith's more like, I'll get you to the third date, as opposed to, I'll make sure that you have sex tonight. Yes, sure. Like, yeah. that, that, that's his difference. That's his, that's his line. It seems like a very blurry line, though. Yeah. It's yeah. only because that guy came out and said, no, I just want you to help me have sex with her. Yeah. Which is what they all want. Yeah. Ultimately. Like, so like I said, it's, it's a blur line, and it would only work in a rom-com world. Yes, exactly. Because, like I said, he's not making women do anything. No. But they all seem to be successes. Yeah. And so whatever Will Smith does, does make women fall in love with these men. And, no. Well, that's the point. Like, that's one of the things this film doesn't talk about. Like, what happens when it doesn't work? Do they get, like, a refund from him? Yeah. <laughs> You'd never see it not work for anyone, which just implies... I think, that these... it, I think it implies it doesn't not work it never fails these women are just secretly they do want to be with these much older men yeah or they're so easily manipulated that there's a way to make them fall in love with these Mm -hmm. like if will smith's job was to help these men to get better at dating Mm -hmm. generally yeah just like generally to improve their confidence and to get out there and to make them better at talking to women Mm -hmm. that would be okay yeah but it's because they're paying him to help them to land specific women Mm -hmm. they're like this is the woman I want and you're going to help me get to them and that's where it just gets creepy yeah yeah because again especially because these women are uniformly much younger and you know less like I'm also absolutely fine with a movie like the concept of people who are like aren't necessarily on the same you know conventional attractiveness scale Mm. getting to I think that's nice you know Mm -hmm. great I think that that's not in itself a bad thing mm-hmm. but the fact that it's all men you mm. wouldn't see it the other way around you would very you would never see like an overweight woman getting with a guy 10 years younger than her mm-hmm. you know like if instead of kevin smith it was like you know rebel wilson or something you know yeah. you just wouldn't see that that's not no. certainly not in this film like no, that never not. happens in this film this is all it's all from the yeah older men wanting these beautiful women mm-hmm. who they think they're in love with but again they're not because they don't know them mm. they don't actually know these women yeah so the yeah, main yeah and that's the thing that, that really undercuts one of the main plots, which is the Kevin Smith plot. So Kevin Smith plays, uh, like this, he's this like, you know, classic loser in many ways, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's he's, um, he's he, an overweight banker who's very awkward and does not know how to talk to women. He's the kind of guy who cannot eat a meal without getting sauce all down his tie, yeah. his shirt. Yeah. He seemingly he can't walk more than 10 paces without falling flat on his face. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure whether he needs dating advice or, like, medical intervention, because he seems like he's... <laughs> I don't know how he managed to get that job at that fancy bank. Well, exactly, yeah. There's, at no like... point do you see him particularly be good at his job. No. Because that could be the thing. Like, he could... You know, Will Smith could help him to, like, have a conversation, and then maybe him and the girl, Allegra, that he's in love mm. with, maybe he impresses her with how smart and on the ball he is, but he's mm. not. He doesn't, like... No. At all. Mm. In, if anything, he's bad at his job. He tells her, you don't need accountants. You make your own decisions. It's yeah. like, that is a great way for this woman to go bankrupt. <laughs> she yeah. won't be thanking you in a year. Yeah. But anyway, so Kevin Smith's one of his clients who yeah hires him because he's madly in love with this woman called Allegra, mm. who is this beautiful, mega-rich socialite, like mm-hmm. kind of a Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton type, you'd imagine. Mm, but, yeah. yeah. Although she seems quite nice. like She's not played as like an airhead. She's played as like a yeah. nice lady. Mm-hmm. But that's all she is. She's just a nice lady who's like, mm-hmm. like... And also a cool 15 years younger than Kevin Smith as well. Yeah. Like, she's the kind of rich where in a board meeting, she just says, well, guess I'm still rich. Yeah. And that's that <laughs> seems to be the outcome of the board meeting. Goody, mm-hmm. I still have all the money. Like, yeah. <laughs> no worries here. <laughs> but he's madly in love with her, allegedly, but they've never had a conversation. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I mean. Like, this plot line... At no point does it justify why he's in love with her. He's not in love with her. He's just fixated on her. He's just obsessed with her. Yeah. That's a di- that's different. Yeah, yeah, it's completely. not love. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not... He doesn't know her well enough to love her. Mm-hmm. And if this film had gone the direction where maybe Will Smith's technique maybe works and he gets to go on a few dates with this girl yeah. and then actually realises, oh, we have nothing in common. Yeah. And then maybe he meets a nice lady in a donut shop or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, who, and then they, who's like his own age. That's and, where know. fat people meet, of course. No, he eats donuts like the... I'm just... Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, like, maybe... <laughs> you know, that, the, this film would be better if more of the people in the film were encouraged to like actually get to know people who they might have shared interests in. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. So maybe his interest is donuts. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the only other way this film would have gone. Yeah. 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 yeah sure. <laughs> but no, it always works. Like it's not about actually getting to know the women at all. Mm. It's about yes, treating them respectfully, but also ultimately the thing that you were fixated on, you know, which doesn't seem like a very good groundwork for a no. long-term relationship. So Will Smith helps him anyway to 
it make an impression on her. Mm-hmm. So he's working as her accountant. First of all, he dramatically quits his job in the middle of a board meeting mm-hmm. because the other board members are trying to advise her to not make a random investment in some friend of hers who's got a fashion line or something, mm-hmm. which seemed like sensible. Mm-hmm. Like he, he just stands up and goes, you don't need these guys. You make your own decisions. Mm-hmm. Like, so, but she's very impressed by it nonetheless. Yeah. They end up going on a date and Will Smith kind of teaches him how to behave on these dates to make her yeah. remain interested. So it's like, he teaches him how to play hard to get, not to come on too strong, mm-hmm. pay attention to her friends, get to know her friends. Mm-hmm. There's also the, the 90-10 kiss rule. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is actually a, a very good rule. The scene goes on way too long. Though. It does go on too Yeah, it's a good rule, but it's all in service of another, oh, ho, 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 gay kiss scene. Yeah. It's, yeah. This is becoming a... I don't know, we've only done two, but this is becoming a bit of a theme. This is going to be in all the Will Smith films, I'm going to get annoyed. If all of his films feature, oh, Will Smith can't be gay, I'm going to get a bit wound up. Wait, did that happen in Wild Wild West? Yeah, there's loads of gay panic in Wild Wild West with him and Kevin Klein. Oh, yeah. You know, all the stuff with the feeling each other's boobs and Yeah, stuff. yeah, sorry, yeah, I yeah. just need a reminder. Yeah, I don't know, that film was really, whoosh. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, he, so Will Smith teaches him some good techniques to mm-hmm. help him to impress this lady. And it works, and they seem to, you know, they hit it off. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Will Smith has his own romantic subplot, which begins with him, he's in like a bar, Mm. and he's getting very judgmentally lectured from his married friend. Mm -hmm. He's just like, you're pathetic, I've got a wife and kids on the way, and your life is pathetic to me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That friend, by the way, never comes back. No, it was weird, right? Never shows up again. Yeah, Yeah. because I recognise him from Friends. Yeah, it's Michael Rappaport. The the, the, the fireman that Phoebe dates. Yeah, the one who shoots the bird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in lots of things, but it's weird how he literally... He's a cop or something. He's a cop, yeah. Yeah. It's weird how he literally never comes back. (laughs) Yeah, it's really weird. (laughs) He's just in that one scene to, like, make Will Smith's life seem pathetic. Yeah. Even though he seems to be doing objectively fine, but... Yeah, like, mate, you wouldn't see that if you'd seen Will Smith's apartment. (laughs) Exactly. I know life's not all about apartments, but that apartment? Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's the thing. In, in rom-com world, life is all about being in love. And if you're not in love, your life is just... You should just jump off a bridge because your life that, is that, meaningless. That's yeah. a very good point, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love how that at this point, Will Smith just turns into just complete, like, villain and just be like, okay, well, I'm going to take two girls home tonight then. Yeah. <laughs> like, just watch me. It's mm. going to happen. Mm. And, like, he doesn't, he doesn't even try. No. <laughs> You know what your problem is, Hitch? You're all about the short game. You pick your shots based on what you see first. Not what's uh, necessarily best for you in the long run. Well, all of us are not married to the woman of our dreams and about to have a baby. You know, I'm very happy for you. Just not meant for everybody. So please, just leave me to my hot, sweaty, totally varied, wildly experimental short game. I was just talking about pool, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. Honestly, I just hope one day you're able to experience the unconditional love and the trust and the openness that, you know, I share with Grace every single day. Is, is this really barroom talk? No, you need to listen to me, man. I'm serious. Because when you get to a place with a woman like that, it's so beyond anything physical. That when I think back to when I used to run around with you and chase all these really gorgeous, but, you know, shallow women, and, I don't know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous and vaguely pathetic. So, yeah, while he's receiving this lecture, he catches the eye of a workaholic gossip columnist played by Eva Mendes. Mm-hmm. And she is a woman who works, and she's not paying enough attention to her love life, and... Mm-hmm. She's too cynical and she's letting life pass her by. And you yeah. tell because she wears glasses and baggy t-shirts. And yeah. She's not ready for love. Yeah. So. And we've seen all this from her friends as well. From her, yeah. That's the thing. There's a lot of awkward exposition in this film. Yeah. And there's a lot of like the friends like, this is your character arc. Mm-hmm. You work too hard. Mm-hmm. You don't have time for love. You mm-hmm. should be on holiday. You're the single friend. Yes, exactly. With that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're the gay best friend. You're the gay best friend number two. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this film is full of archetypes. Like, there's no, there's not, nobody's really fleshed out in this film. Everyone, no. everyone like, serves their purpose, and yeah. that's all they need to do. But yeah, so he rescues her, Will Smith res- rescues her from a, like a bad date. Well, she, she's having a drink in a bar, and a guy starts hitting on her, yeah. and Will Smith rescues her. Yeah. And then he proceeds to borderline stalk her. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, first of all, he gives her a big monologue about guys picking up girls in a bar mm-hmm. and then just like full on Sherlock Holmes her appearance there's a yeah the, the characters in this film they talk like data from Star Trek a lot yeah. it's 
it's weird. There's, it's more. They're not having conversations. They're having conversations about conversations. Yeah, it's like, oh, I see what you're doing. You're wearing the thick glasses, and you're, you've got a fuck off expression on your forehead, yeah. and you've got that drink, which means that you don't want to be talked to. But maybe the guy did talk to you, and it's yeah. all just very meta. Yeah, and it's exhausting. And if anyone tried to hit on me like that, I would just be like, mate, the door. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is not. This the, is not quirky. This, and is, this isn't a conversation. No, it's not. You're just monologuing at me yeah. and making huge assumptions about my life. Yeah. Get lost. Yeah. But again, this is the power of Will Smith. Right? Yeah. And Will Smith in a rom-com means that he was like dead on right with everything that he said, guessed, yes. deducted, whatever. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Completely. Yeah, and like, God, the stalking. It's so... Well, <laughs> we get a flashback scene from like 90s Will Smith where we learn that... Oh, which is 90s Will Smith. It's just full Fresh right. Prince of Bel-Air, yeah. isn't it? He's just the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. I really thought he might start doing the rap. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was hoping he was going to do something. But yeah. I mean, it was enough that it was like... How old would he have been? Like 40 or 50? Oh yeah, Will, Will Smith? Smith is already a cool 45 when this film comes yeah, out. Yeah, so and, and then he starts playing an 18-year-old. Um, oh, it's good, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the film knew exactly what it was, uh, what oh, it was trying to do with yeah, that. Yeah, that was very self-aware. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we get this flashback and we learn that like the core of Will Smith's character in this film is that he had his heart broken in college mm. by this girl and it seems to be that the reason he got his heart broken is that he came on way too strong yeah. with her and it you know put her off yeah but then it seems like that he continues to do that yeah like the film acts like okay he's learned from that and now he's this like smooth operator mm-hmm. but he seems like he just keeps coming on way too strong with Ava Mendes mm-hmm. but she's because it's a rom-com she finds it charming mm-hmm. so yeah they have this chat in the bar and he just like psychoanalyzes her in this like five minute monologue and then just leaves and leaves her with a drink mm-hmm. then he sends her a walkie talkie to her office yeah because you're like I, I didn't get your number so I stalked where you work so, so, so like yeah I, I did some research and found mm-hmm. out where you work sent you a walkie talkie and waited until it was delivered yeah like waited on the end of the walkie talkie until it was handed to you yeah but then like he's just briskly just walking down the street just, just all yeah, casual yeah he's cool like, as a cucumber yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. he's Will Smith yeah but yeah like they have a conversation he tries to ask for a date like tonight she's like no and then he asks for a date okay what about tomorrow night no I mean she's not that abrupt she gives like good excuses because sure. she's into him because it's a rom-com and it's Will Smith yeah and then they're like okay well Sunday morning you can't say no to Sunday morning at 7am at, at 7am I, I can't it, think of a less sexy time yeah I mean like, he, he says with the point like hey it's not a date it's 7am it's not a date at 7am is sure, it yeah and then the courier gives a, a wetsuit yeah just like what so, like, you, you just assumed that I'd be good for 7am on, 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 on Sunday, then? Did he not have a different box for in case she'd said Sunday? Yeah, like, how much, again, yeah, how yeah, much yeah. is he spending on all of this? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, the date itself must have cost him upwards of several thousand dollars, because oh, yeah. he's rented out two... Jet skis. Jet skis, yeah. Mm. And he takes her on a jet ski adventure to Ellis Island in New York. Yes. Where he's rented out an entire museum. Yes. Just because he knows a guy. He, he, know, knows, he, know, the, he knows the guard. Or whatever. I, I assume that he got the guard, his wife or whatever. Yeah. Well, I like to think that that security guard is like his estranged dad. Because yeah. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> he kind of goes, anything for Hitch. And it's yeah. like, aww. <laughs> he just wants to connect with his son. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so he's hired at this whole museum, which, like, first of all, to get there, Will Smith's jet ski breaks down, which initially I'm like, all right, so what's the, what's the, what's is the, this the play? What's, yeah. what's the play here? I hope it wasn't a play, because if it was a play, then Will Smith deliberately kicked a woman in the face. Yeah, to make himself look adorably dorky, yeah. Yeah, I guess, like to, to have like a, a date that just goes horribly wrong. Yeah. And then to continue this horribly wrong date, he takes her to the museum, and they, like, they're like exploring the museum, and they're like, oh wow, it's amazing, I've never been here before, I've always meant to. Mm-hmm. Oh, every New Yorker says that. Yeah. Um, and then he shows this book that's... Was that a sign? That was where people uh, migrated into America, right? Yeah, it's a, it's the sign-in book from when the when immigrants, I think, would land on because yeah. New York is obviously a famous spot where a lot of like mm. immigrants would arrive into into the USA and they did sign-ins. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, he's done all this background research on the again, so creepy for date number one. Yeah, he's <laughs> fully researched her and figured out that her great great grandfather or something yeah. landed on this specific island and signed mm. into this book. Yeah, and he's paid. Not only for the museum to be left completely empty for the morning, <laughs> but also so that the security guard, possibly his dad, mm. has turned <laughs> the page to the exact page where her, her great grandfather's signature mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Just to be like, oh, how romantic. Not, yeah. holy shit, where is my restraining order? Yeah, like, when she starts, she starts crying when she sees yeah. the name, and like, 
you know, initially you're supposed to think it's like, oh, it's because it's just so sweet. She's just overcome, um, yeah. Yeah, she's overcome. And like, you know, to an extent, all right, in, in this world, I accept that. Mm-hmm. And then her crying gets a bit more intense and like negative emotional. Mm-hmm. And she runs off. And yeah, and she and she runs off and you're like, okay, clearly that didn't work. And I was like, yeah, damn right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's terrified. Yeah, like... You need to get off the island now. Yeah. Like you, you leave him there with his broken jet ski or something, and you, you just bolt. Sidebar: I did also notice that she was walking around the museum in her wetsuit. Like, yeah, how's that romantic? No. Like, she must be kept freezing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and then it turns out that uh, her ancestor was a serial killer. Yeah. I did enjoy. <laughs> I, I, I did enjoy this little vein of dark humor. That actually was yeah. one of my favorite things in the movie. Like it did get legitimately dark in places, yeah. which was quite fun. But yeah. And it was just so ridiculous. It's like, yeah. okay, guys, uh, I'm just imagining in the writer's room. Yeah. All right, guys, we need we need something to go wrong with the date here. How about we kick her in the face? Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's date ending. I think Will Smith could bounce back from that. He can bounce back from kicking a woman in the face. Come on, come on, guys. Give me something else. Give me something else. Um, okay, so he finds this book, and it's got her great-great-granddad's signature in it, and he's a serial killer. Yes. Yes, yes, Tony, you're going to pay rise tonight. Cut, print, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's ridiculous. And the thing is, this is clearly like a major thing for her because she's like, "Oh yeah, my family's tried to forget." Yeah, it's like, deep like, trauma. Like, yeah, he's yeah like, like, it, like yeah. We've tried to move on, and she's clearly very messed up by it. Again, and do you think that like he did that on purpose to make her vulnerable? I, I don't know, but it, it gets so much darker if that's the case. Yeah, exactly. But then, like, when it gets to near the end of the movie, I'm skipping ahead. When she finds out what it is that he does mm. and shows up to a date at his apartment, and they start having a food fight <laughs> with like raw broccoli, which was I hilarious, mean, yeah, by that's the way. Ridiculous. He he uh, he then throws that insult back in her face and like calls her a butcher and just like, dear God, yeah, <laughs> like he's a massive gaslighter in this film. Yeah, hugely. like like at that point, that would be unforgivable. Yeah, like I know that she forgives him for his job, mm-hmm. sure, whatever. I'll accept that because the film makes me. Yeah, but uh, that insult, no, that was a low blow. That's calling on deep family trauma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So my family never saw him again. Well, except for on the wanted posters. Look, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm, when I saw it on the computer, it said the butcher of Cadiz. You know, but I, th- I thought it was a profession, not a headline. It's just one of those horrible family legacies we've all tried to forget. What if I told you that I know exactly what you do and how you do it? And I think it's despicable! You know what? We might need to go out to dinner. Yeah, there's a great seafood restaurant I'd love to take you to. (sighs) How about you just get a cleaver, butcher? So, yeah, there's kind of a running thing of how he keeps taking on all of these dates and they all seem to go horribly wrong. Mm. So there's the date in the museum and there's a second date where they go on like a foodie thing and... He has an allergic reaction to seafood, like oysters, I think it is, or shellfish or something. Yeah. And his whole... and, and, and again, I'm just like, what's his play here? Because it's it, a long cause con. It, yeah, because yeah, it's just as, like, something, some awkward question comes up. Mm-hmm. And then he just starts having this allergic reaction. I was like, okay, well, he's just doing this to get out of, you know, because... Oh, just, does she know what he does at this point? No, she doesn't. They go on a double date to this, like, cooking thing. This, like, restaurant, mm-hmm. like, where they cook their own food. It's like yeah. a hipstery kind of thing yeah but they go with her boss and her mm. boss's wife mm-hmm. who is a psychiatrist yeah and again we get another one of these conversations where they're, they're not having a conversation they're just like everyone's just meta psycho <laughs> like, like i'm very impressed that you've had this i've been talking to you for 15 minutes and you've asked us these questions and these mm. questions you've avoided this it's like what the fuck is this take a day off My yeah God. <laughs> but yeah it's, he, she asks us something and at the same time he has a convenient allergic reaction to his mm. self shellfish yeah. yeah so and then his entire face blows up yeah which again i found funny in you know as it goes mm-hmm. you know fine yeah. yeah so he has this severe allergic reaction and she takes him back to her apartment mm-hmm. which is a palatial mansion mm-hmm. like, it's ridiculous it looks more fancy than the museum they've just been in right? yeah yeah and again, she's like, I mean, you don't, God knows what he's earning. And maybe he's like got a lot of millionaires paying him, but like, she's a journalist, a gossip columnist. Mm-hmm. That is not a gossip columnist's apartment. Like, I mean, it's for a big magazine or something. Even so, even so, that is not, I mean, it, you know, sex in the city, like, the, the, that is the fantasy of New York, but it's yeah. not in any way reality. But then also, as the film sort of draws to a close, they make it look like her apartment is shit. When? 
Like at the end when they have a when they, when they have a conversation through the door. She's at her apartment, right? You're right. That looks like a much shittier apartment compared to like the giant yeah. room that she's in at that point. Yeah, yeah, because it just looks like it's you know just one floor off the street, like mm. just up some some dark, dingy stairs. Yeah, and it's this sort of old rustic metal door, which I know is you know somewhat mm. fashionable, but it's not fancy. You know what? You're right. I didn't notice. That's so not the same room, is it? In yeah, any way, it's shape, really or weird. But it was her apartment, right? I- I'm very sure it was because, like, yeah. why would he be there and then be surprised that there's somebody else there? Yeah. Like, it, it it must be her apartment. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, she just walks down, like, one flight of stairs, and they're the, just out on the street. You're right. It's like she's in the meatpacking district, but it's also a giant mansion. Yeah. <laughs> like, what on earth is this? Yeah. It, it's fantasy land, Harry. Whereas, you know, you get to his apartment, his looks like a penthouse that literally has... Oh, the... it is, because we do see his apartment separately when they have the broccoli fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is nice enough, but it's nowhere near as big as hers. Yeah. It's nowhere near as big as hers, but, well, that, that you initially see. Mm. But, like... He has a lift that his doors open into his apartment. Oh, you're that right. That probably means it's a penthouse apartment. Yeah. <laughs> a penthouse apartment in New York. Mm-hmm. He must be a multi-millionaire. Yeah. Well, this film has no basis in reality whatsoever. No. Right? And I feel, How I... much do you think he earns for, 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 for getting people together? I don't know. Because like, the people he's getting together, they're mostly just regular people. I mean, Kevin James is an accountant for a multi-millionaire socialite. So maybe he's got a good retainer. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure that he, earn, he earns a fair bit, yeah. Yeah, but I know what you mean. Like, a lot of these guys don't seem like... They're all, they're all super rich. Maybe they're all, maybe maybe his core demographic is like your Steve Jobsy types. You know, like tech billionaires who, still, who are still nerds and can't really get with women even though they're super wealthy. Right, sure. Have a yeah. lot of money to fling at Will Smith's way. Yeah. Maybe. That's yeah. the only thing I could think of, but yeah. I don't know. No, no, I, I wouldn't waste too much headspace on it. Like this film has no, no grounding in reality whatsoever when it comes to that. But yeah, so they go back to her apartment and they have like a tender moment and they kind of fall in love. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then later on, she discovers his real identity mm. through the guy who wanted to get to have sex with her best friend, who, mm-hmm. like the sleazy guy. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, she discovers who he is. She's furious and she exposes him and Kevin James, both mm-hmm. of them, on, on the front pages of her gossip column. Because mm-hmm. obviously it's like Kevin James is sleeping with the socialite who's very famous. So Ava Mendes breaks the story that like this Kevin James paid Will Smith mm-hmm. to get him into bed or whatever, yeah. into a relationship yeah, yeah. with her. Yeah, so she exposes them. Uh, they, they have the broccoli fights I don't know if you've got anything else to say about the broccoli fights or... <laughs> there's not much more other than just it was really entertaining why did he is that a normal thing like, I've never been maybe I don't go to fancy enough parties but a bowl full of cold broccoli yeah I think it was to like dip in hummus and stuff was it oh okay yeah because it's just sat in the like it's not like part of the meal no it's, it's like, not it's, just... it's not a side salad it's like he's cooking well, the meal and well, she's yeah, just yeah. sat there on the table like yeah, the coffee yeah, if, table if, if you looked like the coffee table was Full of food. Okay. Absolutely full of food. And it's just dinner for the two of them. Yeah. Like, if it was a dinner party, Mm -hmm. like, and, you know, you're having, like, six, eight people over, then sure, you're probably... Put some nibbles down. Yeah, yeah. put put some nibbles down, fill your coffee table with food and, you know, dips and that, and Mm -hmm. great. Cold broccoli, though? I mean, it's not a winner. No. (laughs) Like, I wouldn't turn my nose up at it, but I wouldn't be like, oh my god, broccoli! Yeah. Right? Nobody ever goes, oh my god, broccoli. (laughs) No. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. But yeah, so they have this, this whole... This is why this film is insane. There's many, <laughs> There's yeah. just so many little details in it that you're just like, what the yeah, is there's, that? Yeah, there's so many bits where you can tell that this film was made by, like, Hollywood people. Yeah. yeah. People who just don't know what reality people is. Who, yeah, I mean, broccoli probably is a snack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they have this full, like, broccoli fight, and then they, they, they kind of break up, they storm off. Mm-hmm. Poor old Kevin James, I guess, is dumped by the socialite. Mm-hmm. Then Will Smith confronts Ava Mendes again at a speed dating table. Mm-hmm. She goes on to a speed dating event with her friend, mm-hmm. and he, again, tracks her down, has, and they have this whole conversation. And yeah, this confrontation that they have at the speed dating thing, mm. this is when the film really goes back around again and just becomes like a full incel film, because mm-hmm. then he, he goes on this very weird rant where yeah. he's kind of like, like she, she says that he's a, she calls him a sleazeball, and like she says, you know, you're tricking women and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, no. And she, he's like, what's your source? And she says, the guy who wanted to sleep with my friend. And he's like, guys like that are the reason that, that I have to do my job, because nice guys, they make it impossible for nice guys to get with women. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa. That's <laughs> It's very. It's really. You're, is that you're not a nice guy, Will Smith. You kicked her in the face. Yeah, you think you're a nice guy. Yeah, exactly. It, he's kind of saying that you know I have to trick women because 
bad guys Mm -hmm. make it harder for nice guys. So the only thing nice guys can do is lie their way in. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'm like, okay, so at what point in this film does he learn that he's wrong? Yeah. He doesn't. No, no, She apologizes to him. Yeah. She's like, oh my God, I totally misjudged you. Yeah, and then they get together at the end. And then, yeah, she fully apologizes. Then he goes and fixes things with Kevin James and Mm -hmm. the socialite, which again, it's just kind of like, it also just wasn't realistic. Yeah. Like, he, he walks onto... Well, he's, he's already on her boat, like, they've planned that they're going to meet. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and then, like, they have this conversation. She she asks a bit about, like, okay, so, like, explain to me what it is that you do and how you did all this. And, like, yeah. did you make him do this thing that I really liked that he did, you know, when he spilt sauce on himself? Or did you make him teach me to whistle and stuff like that? How dare you do all that research and to find that I couldn't whistle? Yeah. And... And then he's like, oh, no, he did all those things. Mm. And she's like, oh, really? Yeah. Like, also, like, also like, like, immediately like, forgives no. him for paying to like, trick her. Yeah, yeah like that, that. The lies are forgotten. Like, like, like from Will Smith's point of view, that's the easiest get out. Just saying, like, oh, no, he came up with those things on him, by, by himself. I didn't do that. Yeah. I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, the woman would not believe him for a second then. No. Nobody would. No, well, she doesn't seem like... Yeah, this film does not paint her character as having any kind of critical faculties whatsoever. Like, But it doesn't paint her as dumb, though, either. Not dumb. No, she's not played as, like, a dumb, but, but like, she's not given enough, like, room to actually have a character. She, yeah. She's just a nice lady that Kevin James wants. Yeah. But it's not the worst thing. It's it's nice enough in itself, like, that she learns that actually... The, or that they all learn that the things that actually attracted her to Kevin James were the things that were real about him and not... Mm-hmm. They weren't just the things that... Will Smith taught him to manipulate. Like, that's mm-hmm. a nice enough message. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't really explore still the levels of lies and deception that mm. he went to to, to get her. Like, yeah. 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 So anyway, so they get back together. Then Will Smith goes back to Eva Mendes' apartment, mm. kind of rants and raves at her. Mm-hmm. She tries to leave with a... She's like... I've, she implies she's got a new guy. Mm-hmm. And he just ignores him completely. Literally throws himself in front of their car. Like jumps No, 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 on, on their on car. T- like, jumps on like, their car, yeah. Like, for whatever reason, she starts driving away, mm-hmm. even though she clearly can't drive a car with yeah. a manual gear changer. Mm-hmm. What Americans call stick. Yeah. But uh, it's her car, right? Like, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Why, why are they suddenly driving a Mini? Yeah, in New like, York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's happened? Nobody here is British. Yeah. And suddenly she's driving a, a, a car that she can't drive. And this guy who's come up out of nowhere is like, maybe I should drive? And I'm like, yeah, maybe he should. Yeah. Because you're clearly going to injure somebody. And then Bill Smith jumps on top of the car from behind. Like, he just does a running jump and lands, like, on the sunroof. Yeah. Just because she's trying to get away. And he's like, no, 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 you need to hear what I've got to say because I'm a nice guy. Yeah. And then so she abruptly slams on the brakes. He goes flying over the front of the car, landing in the road. We don't see how. Yeah. Um, It would be quite natural for somebody to land, like, on their head. Yeah, um, he's very lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he could well be dead after that. Yeah, like oh, very yeah, bleak end of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he died. Yeah, yeah, and then she's just like, "Oh wow, he clearly must be serious if he jumped on a car like that." Wow, I better listen to what he's got to say. Yeah, and yeah, he talks her down, and then it turns out that she was just driving that guy. It to, was her to, brother-in-law to, yeah. to to go and meet her sister, who's literally just ten meters away from the house, just buying yeah. fruit or whatever. So there was no point anyone getting into a car at any point. Mm, definitely not. No. Yeah, and so, like, she's not with anybody. She is still single, so, you know, yeah. everything's okay. She's single. The woman's single. Yay! And they kiss. They kiss and um, they love. And... Yeah, he doesn't... Le- what does he? What does Will Smith's character learn in this movie? Oh, nothing, because he's not wrong. She's, no. ro- she's yeah. wrong. All so the she's women the apologise needs- to him. Yeah. 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 It's such a weird message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the end of the film. That, Although- is, that, that, that is the end of the film, plus what I thought was going to be a Will Smith rap. I know, we were so close. So right? close. And yeah. it's got some people who sounded a bit like Will Smith um, to do a rap while mm. uh, Will Smith and Kevin James and others dance at a it wedding. It does, much like In and Out, that's free for, we're free for two on films that end on a dance-off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, like, ultimately, this whole... I, I realised when I got to the end of this, like, you know what? F- finding a date, it is hard. That That is, that is definitely true. Um, and it goes wrong a lot of the times, and it makes people very unhappy and very depressed and everything. And that's all. That's all valid. This film doesn't quite get it right, but it does get some things right. Sure. And that's not to be understated. But everything would just be so much simpler if everybody was gay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Wouldn't it? Well, how did that become the thing that you took away from this? I don't know. I just I thought, mean, you're not wrong. But yeah, like... exactly. Yeah, I just thought it. Just like, yep. Yeah, no, that would that would pretty much just solve all these issues. How? Just men know how to talk to men. Women know how to talk to women. 
Okay. Well, well, at least that's the impression I get. Sure. Yeah. No. No. You, you'd have more. You can definitely have more. You know, upfront conversations. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. it's never too late, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that's how it works, John. <laughs> But yeah, Will Smith does not learn anything. To the, to the point where mm. the last scene of the film before the dance-off mm. fully confirms that he still ups with his old tricks because he does the same... Oh, the, yeah. gra- the old granny who fought, who like puts her own life at risk and yeah. fake chokes mm-hmm. so that Ava Mendez's lonely friend mm-hmm. can pull some... Guy, pull her grandson. Pull her grandson, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He's still up to his, his old tricks. Although at least he's helping women now, not just men. Yeah. yeah maybe baby steps. But yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still like fascinated that your takeaway was it. This one would be better if everyone was gay. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying this film would be better. I'm but saying life like, would be better. Yeah, the dating world would just be easier if everybody sure. was gay. Sure. Okay. But, no, yeah. I, I love that. That was your takeaway from this. this. You know, it's not. A lot of us are burdened with being straight, and we'll just have to live with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's your source. You buried yourself, Alex. Then you weren't listening. I heard every word. You're a scam artist. You trick women into getting into getting them. out of their own way, so great guys like Albert Brenneman have a fighting chance. Please. Okay, no, no, no. I want I want everybody to take a good look at this right now because this this right here this is exactly why falling in love is so goddamn hard. Sir, let's go now. And Vance Munson is a pig, and I refused to work with him. Need to get your facts right. It's because of jerks like him that I even have a job. Had a job. All right, so drinking games? Sure, yeah. Okay, so first drinking game, of course, mm-hmm. drink for narration. Drink for narration. I had drink for awkward exposition, but it's the same thing. Yeah, I've also got drink for breaking the fourth wall. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of Will Smith for... Wolf- a lot of Will Smith fourth wall breaking in this. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I did enjoy Ava Mendez's like opening scene where she's just like classically walking down a street mm-hmm. on a mobile phone, being mm-hmm. like, "Allegra, she's the wealthiest woman in all of New York, and <laughs> she just got dumped by a Swedish guy." <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of that kind of like scene yeah. setting. For yeah, 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 <laughs> plenty of. Yeah, very good. Drink every time Kevin Smith breaks, drops, or spills something. Great. Like, yeah, he is. Yeah, like it, it's it is one of those movie cl- klutzes who is like, it does look like it borders on a medical a m- medical issue, like mm-hmm. a mental health issue or something. Like he yeah. he cannot open anything without it spilling all over the place. Like he no. frequently falls over, which is a wonder why he's that size as well. Because like if you can't if you can't hold a sandwich or open a packet of crisps. Yeah. He must have a lot of sandwiches. All the calories are falling like, down his side. Yeah. Yeah, they're, not, they're not going in, they're just falling out. Because, yeah, like. you know, we see a large ratio of his food just go to waste. Yes. But if he's that size, there must be a lot of food to start with. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. My favourite bit was oh, when God. he just walk, he, he almost is in the bathroom washing his hands, mm. and then one thing leads to another, and he ends up walking out of the toilet with no pants on. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that they'd uh, continue that a bit more with, like, like, Will Smith has the nightmare client. They didn't really do much with it. No, you're right. Like, I was thinking, okay, they've set the scene of Will Smith is this guy who's, who's, who sets people up or whatever, and he's really good at it. Mm-hmm. But then he meets Kevin James, and he's a nightmare. He's the because unfixable. He, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, like, that that could have been something. Yeah, that could have been part Not of it. Not saying yeah. that would be better than what this was. No, but you're right. Like, I will say, much like Will Smith, I think Kevin James is surprisingly makes it less creepy than it could be. Yeah, I think he is quite likable. Yeah, like, in a way that, that whole relationship you can kind of buy it. Where yeah. I think in a lot of other actors you would be. Well, I think like, it just because no. it, it makes him such an underdog. It does by making yeah. him such a klutz and being very nervous and he has like no confidence at all. Sure, yeah. Like it makes him a very relatable underdog. Yeah, but also I kind of I believed weirdly I believed his relationship with Allegra more than I believed Will Smith and Ava Mendes' relationship. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. They yeah. just seemed like they had they were just two nice people who gravitated towards each other, which yeah. was fine. But yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, drink whenever a woman a woman does or says something that only women in films do. Oh yeah, do you want some examples of that? Or? Well, just basically any sort of like, oh, you saved my dog. Oh, you're such a hero. Let's I get married. I guess we're on a date rather than, okay, thanks, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, that, yeah. oh, you just kicked me in the face and showed me my my murderous uncle's signature. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, you were just see inc- each other tomorrow. You were just incredibly rude to me in a bar and mistook me for a waitress. I'm yeah. charmed by this for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're talking to me on a walkie-talkie. Great. There's a reason I didn't give you my phone number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Drink every time Will Smith exhibits psychotic behavior. I've got drink for a lie or deception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I, I'd say go kind of hand in hand. They do, yeah. There's also, he seems like he has quite a short fuse, tempo-wise. But yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of him just, yeah, clearly, like, being very angry or lying, like, constantly, constantly lying or, mm-hmm. or just, yeah, generally being creepy. Mm-hmm. Lots of red flags. Yeah. yeah, I've got a drink for background research. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he really, like, meticulously researches the women he's targeting. Mm-hmm. Like, And targeting is absolutely the word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, th- this film does not have a good message in that way. Like, no. <laughs> not one bit. No. Drink every time Will Smith spends what must be an obscene amount of money on a stunt. Yeah. So obviously the puppy one, like, what kind of a long walk was it to get that puppy? What happens to that puppy? God only knows. He must have borrowed it from his dad, maybe. Yeah, maybe his dad, yeah. The jet, pa- the jet ski scene, that mm-hmm. must have cost him a pretty penny. Mm-hmm. Pretty much everything he does. Everything seems to be very, very expensive. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so my last drinking game is uh, drink for incel behaviour. Oh, yeah. Yes. Great. So I'm going to the movie then. Essentially, You've got yes. drink for incel behaviour, I've got drink for when women don't behave like women. Exactly, yeah. That, that pretty much covers 90% of the runtime of this film. <laughs> yeah. Um, excellent. Okay, so listeners, if you've enjoyed this episode, you might not be aware, but you might also be aware. I don't know. Um, me and John are on Patreon.com, and if you feel like it, um, you can support us for as much or as little as you want. We don't do a tier-based system. We do a pay-as-you-feel. So, you know, you can pay us $2. That's absolutely fine. Pay us 15000 That's also equally fine. We've not tried to pull out the 15000 in a while. Keep that rolling, yeah? Just let yeah. you know, it's equally fine. We don't it's, mind. Yeah, we are happy with either, yeah. Either works. I mean, I have a preference, but, you know. There's a few bonus features you get with our Patreon. You get the bonus show, which uh, we review films mm-hmm. um, without Patreon sequels. Normally films in cinema, but, you know, we've been doing our best over the past few months. Yeah. Um, you also get to choose the film for us every now and then for the main episode. We do a Patreon pick where you can guest if you want to, but you don't have to. Mm-hmm. You get a 30 second advert slot on the main show. You get extended versions of the main show and you get a little Facebook group as well that you can join. Yeah. All like minded Beyond yeah. the Box Set fans. Indeed. Fan club, some would say. Yes. All that, patreon.com slash Beyond the Box Set. Indeed. So, what does a receptionist do when the fire alarm goes off? I don't know. Call the fire brigade? I seriously hope that was a joke. That's what the fire alarm is for. Well, she's the one who asked what to do. I'm just guessing. Well, I think you'd have to be the one that makes sure everyone knows where the fire exits are and checks that everyone is out of the building. Like, we have the list of guests. It's not that hard. I just wait till it actually happens and we'll see if you find it's not that hard. What are you going to do if everyone goes off running in different directions before you check them off your list? Or someone sleeps through it. I highly doubt you can sleep through a fire alarm. I have. Sure. So what, we're just going to say they'll check off all the guests as they exit the building to make sure they're all out? Welcome to The Quids In is a new fictional podcast coming to all podcasting platforms weekly from September 10th, 2020. Learn more about the show by visiting our website at islandlifeproductions.com and clicking on Support Us. Alright then, so sequels. Sequels, yeah. Right. So we're trying something a, a tad different this week. Mm-hmm. Rather than me and John trying to come with uh, fully prepared single ideas, we've just come with a few small ones and we're just going to riff on them. Bounce them off each other, yeah. Yeah. And we might even extend that into li- listener submissions. That could be a good idea. Could we'll be, yeah. See, because I know there's some pretty good ideas on my end this week. Oh, yeah. So first idea we're going to explore is called Hitched. Hitched. Okay. Yeah. Will Smith's daughter mm-hmm. is getting married, so... This, is, this is Willow Smith. Could be, we're thinking could be played by Willow Smith. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like 15 years later or so, present day basically. Sure. But Will Smith doesn't approve of the groom. Yes. So how does this go? Okay, so my inspiration for this is the classic franchise Father of the Bride, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you haven't seen. No. Because it happened in the 90s. But yeah, so I'm thinking it's going to have to be more than 15 years for it to be, unless they're getting married in like Utah or something. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say like 18 years have passed, or 16 to 18 years. Let's call it 20. It's a safe time. A safe 20, yeah. fine, yeah. And let's say Ava Mendez and Will Smith are still married, mm-hmm. and... Yeah, Will Smith now has a fully grown daughter mm-hmm. who is now getting married as well. Yeah. To a young boy. Yeah. And so 
maybe Will Smith is meeting. What's, it, what's, what's this boy like? Is he like? Do we like him? The, the, the I feel the like viewers? he should be charming and much like Will Smith, but that is what makes Will Smith uncomfortable. Right. Okay. So Will Smith kind of sees he sees him, a lot of himself in like him, also yeah. like almost like competition sort of thing. Sort of. Yeah. Not in a creepy way, okay, but like yeah. in a you know he knows his own games from when he was younger, and so yeah. now he's seeing them. But his own daughter is the target, and so he feels very protective about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you've by saying somebody who's basically got the charisma of Will Smith, you've cast a, a very difficult question here. Who do we? Who, who could possibly be? The new Will Smith. Yeah. I mean, it's a question that uh, filmmakers have been asking for a very long time. For, See, ever since Independence Will Smith went over 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the new Will Smith? The, spoiler alert, the answer is not Liam Hemsworth. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trade down. Um, or you could go in like the exact opposite route and have someone like is it, who's is it, super white, like Timothy Chalamet. Ah, okay, yeah. And maybe that's why he doesn't trust him. Yeah, that works. But just just quickly to get back on, I'd say that the new Will Smith, that level of charisma, but at that young age, I'm going to say Donald Glover. Donald Glover is a good shout. That yeah. is a very good I'm shout. I'm not just saying because he's black, like he's definitely got a lot of charisma and he's very likable. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And, and he's, he's a, a rapper and he also raps. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that is a pairing that I'm surprised hasn't happened yet, just in Hollywood generally. What, just to make him like play a young version of a Will Smith character? Or just bounce them off each other, because you're right, I think they have, you know, definite... Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so who, who are we going with here? Donald Glover or Timothy Donald... Chalamet? No, let's go for Donald Glover. We, we, overu- <laughs> we overuse Timothy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... So, yeah, so Will Smith's daughter is engaged to be married to Donald Glover. Yeah. Will Smith meets him for the first time shortly before the wedding, mm-hmm. doesn't trust him. Why isn't Donald Glover in more things? I know. Is he just is focusing he, on his like, music career? Like maybe he's not, he's not in a lot of things. No, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's just in things that we don't see. I guess. Yeah. Or maybe he's just focused on his music career. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I would. Like, I, I always like to see him. Mm. He's always a good time. Yeah. So, I was thinking maybe to tie it back in with the original. Maybe Will Smith discovers that Donald Glover used a love. What was it? What was the term again? Date a date doctor. Use a date doctor. Yeah, because Will Smith's whole thing is that he does way too much research mm, on people. Like yeah. he's creepy. He researches. Yeah. So let's say Willow comes back from college, whatever, mm-hmm. announces that she's engaged to this guy they've never met. Mm-hmm. You know, Ava's very happy for them, but Will's suspicious. He does a whole de- internet deep dive, fully hacks into this Donald mm-hmm. Glover guy's you know accounts, whatever. Yeah. Finds a bunch of emails from several months ago, whenever they first met, whatever. Yeah that show that he used a date doctor to win Willow's heart. Right, okay. How is this going to go? Is this going to be a happily ever after for Don Glover? Is he is, is, is he going to... I think it's going to end as a happy... I think it, it should probably end happy ever after. End with uh, another wedding and a dance scene. Well, I think he does ultimately marry Willow Smith. Yeah. But it's the journey. It's like Will Smith, when he finds out that a date doctor was used, he immediately mistrusts him even more it's like mm. he, he's just he's lied to my daughter he's a liar but maybe initially he doesn't make the connection in his own head and he's probably yeah but he's then in when denial he, then when he does he, he has to like oh my god wait, he has to this, reckon this with is his what own. I was yeah exactly and this, maybe this, Ava's this, like well this is what you did this is what I, this is how I made my millions yeah exactly and so he has to reckon with the, when it's his own daughter it's a different conversation mm. and he, he can't just let it go yeah and then I think what needs to happen is that he and Donald Glover need to be on a very uncomfortable road trip definitely yeah yeah I, I, I think in some way of making them meet, but yeah, a road trip certainly works. Yeah, in which you know they win each other's grudging respect. You know, oh, I love road trips. Yeah, that, everything's yeah. gonna happen. They're gonna break down. Yeah, they're gonna be in a motel. Mm-hmm. Um, they're gonna get in a sticky situation and gonna get chased out or something. I don't know. Definitely. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts. Yeah, it's all all the road trips. Hijinks trip you. Hijinks will every many every... references to old old, old uh, road trip movies. Indeed, indeed, yeah. There's probably going to be a scene where they Whoa, get mistaken. steady driving there, Thelma. There's going to be a scene where they end up in a motel. And it's a one bedroom, and they have to awkwardly share yeah. a bed. And <laughs> yeah, they'll get mistaken for gay lovers, and there'll be all this, you know. Mm-hmm. Like... Yeah, 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 totally. The whole thing, and then but they end up going on a road trip together for reasons, mm. and ultimately Will Smith is won around, mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, you know, and he. Gives them their blessing, and they the film ends with another wedding and another dance off. So yeah. yeah, and then I'd say it should finish with a montage of Donald Glover then redoing the road trip just by himself this time. Okay, and just going and paying all the money he owes to all the situations that were set up. Oh, I see. So he paid a second yeah. guy as a father-in-law date doctor. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
some, someone who just pays to help him to win out to create situations where his father-in-law will respect him. Yeah, the date the that's date, really the, good. The date Doctor Scene has moved on. It has grown. Wow, it's, 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 it's like it's, the Matrix. Yeah. yeah, you know how Will Smith in the original said, like, you don't need to, you don't need to tell her that you're a good guy. You need to tell her best friend. This the one dad, is yeah. like, you don't need to tell her that you're good marriage material. You need to tell her dad. Yeah. Is Donald Glover doing the breaking the fourth wall in this one? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, fully. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Very good. So that's hitched. That's hitched. Nice and easy. Yeah. Easy title. Good. Okay. What, what have you got? Oh, by the way, hitched is like at least half of my listen submissions. No, no, no. Same. Yeah. <laughs> the title. Mm-hmm. So my main idea was something where it's the same film, or maybe a sequel. Mm. Actually, no. The idea I've got is a sequel, but ultimately it takes the plot of this film and turns it into more of a horror movie. Oh. It kind of makes it more that Will Smith's character, because he does exhibit quite stalkerish. Mm-hmm you know, psychopathic tendencies in this film, but the mm-hmm. film doesn't explore that because it's a rom-com. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, let's say it's a sequel. And so at the end of this film, Will Smith and Ava Mendes, they get together. It's lovely. They're, mm-hmm. in, a, they're in a relationship. They're very happy. Yeah. They've had their classic rom-com happy ending. Okay. But maybe as time goes on, we pick up like a year into their relationship or something. Yeah. And Ava starts to realize that actually Will's character is... All those like grand romantic gestures that he made, like the jet skis Mm. and all the lies and the deceptions, Mm -hmm. whatever. They were actually warning signs of very obsessive behavior. Yeah. And he continues to get worse in that respect. And actually he becomes incredibly possessive of her. Mm, Yeah, I see that. Yeah, like any male friend she might have, even if they're gay, whatever. Mm -hmm. Even even a female friend, he's he's very like, you know, why are we talking to them? Mm -hmm. And and it starts to get very unpleasant and uncomfortable. Yeah. He just, he's very possessive and jealous and paranoid and yeah. yeah not a good guy yeah will smith is a villain it would be a good that's what i'm thinking it would be a good like that's against new. type I, he's played like anti-heroes like serious ass but yeah. he's never like really played no. full villain yeah which i think would be a good you know it'd be like seeing tom hanks play villain it'll be interesting mm-hmm. yeah it'd be different so i mean where can we go with that Tom Hanks as a villain. That would also so, be good. Yeah. It's blown my mind. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's ever happened. Like, I don't think it could work. It's way against brand. Yeah, well, Robin Williams played villains a couple of times. Like, very much against brand. And it, really? it, yeah, one hour photo. We'll, what, see, we'll do it what, sometime. Is, is that a film? Yes, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it sometime. I've heard of it. He did it more than once, Like, but it wasn't the norm for him. Mm. But yeah, it can be done and it can be very effective. Mm. Mm. So I'm thinking of this as kind of like Hitch meets the talented Mr. Ripley kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, where there's a lot of suspicion. God, I only vaguely remember that. It was a good film. That was a long time ago it we was, watched That was it. like episode 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> so Will Smith becomes very possessive, like doesn't want, like her seeing her male friends, mm. you know, starts to make her feel very mm-hmm. like trapped. And then as time goes on, her friends start meeting mysterious accidents. So like, yeah. maybe some like hot male f- friend that she has from work or whatever, right. who she's absolutely not got anything going on with, but yeah. Will Smith is obviously very paranoid. Yeah. He, he's like found dead at the bottom of a flight of stairs or, you know, falls down a lift shaft or mm-hmm. something, you know. Mm-hmm. A piano falls on his head. <laughs> something, you know. <laughs> they just get very elaborate. Exactly, yeah. And then that happens and then like it happens more than once. And another like male friend of hers mm-hmm. is found dead and she starts to get very paranoid that could Will be responsible? Mm-hmm. I would like it that He's not responsible. No, no, yeah, I'm building... Th- I, I feel like he isn't, but, like, the whole yeah. movie is, a, like, a red herring that makes you think he is. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's playing this super creepy guy who's mm. very unhappy un- unhappy with everything, then. Yeah, he's possessive and, yeah, jealous. So, yeah. Yeah. Do they have much interaction during the film? Him and his wife? Yeah. I mean, they're married. They're sharing a bed every night. So, or yeah, to be but, just on camera. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm kind of imagining that they're just never really in the same room. Okay. Well, um, maybe they become more estranged as the film goes on, as, as yeah. she s- suspects that he might be... Like, even Robin. though he's observing her and stuff and yeah. seeing that she has other friends and that, they don't really spend any time together. Yeah, okay. I think that'd be a good sort of underlying thing to have in this film because then, like, it would show that there is no relationship here at all. Yeah, the relationship has died. Yeah, yeah. but it's all sort of completely in his imagination. Yeah. Um, I don't know where we're going with that. I feel like I was building to a twist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like the twist is that it's not him who's actually the killer. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah. If not him, then who? Don't know. I was thinking if, like, the whole film makes you think Will Smith is the killer, mm. it's going to turn out that Kevin Smith is the killer. Wow, so you've got Kevin Smith in. 
Yeah. Great. With his backwards hat and... Oh, sorry. Kevin James. I did it again. <laughs> Damn it. It's, it's the Smith factor, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. It's because it's Will Smith and Kevin James. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Kevin James is the killer, not Kevin Smith. Okay. Kevin... So why, why is Kevin James doing it then? Maybe because he feels such loyalty. Is he, is he, I think... Could he be doing it to, like, spite Will Smith or something? Because apparently this relationship that that Will Smith got him into just absolutely didn't work. Mm. And he blames it all on Will Smith because, like, hey, that's not how you get in relationships. Maybe. Actually, you, that could work. I was thinking... Just kind of undo the message of the first film. Yeah, I was thinking it's just gratitude. Like, he's, like, so grateful to Will Smith for the first film that he's very protective of him. Mm. And so he wants to protect him misguidedly oh, yeah. from anything like that. But actually, it could be even better if... Yeah, maybe him and Allegra have mm. broken up and now he's fallen in love with Will Smith's wife. Uh, and so, he, because uh, Will Smith yeah, taught yeah. him that, like, whatever you need to do... Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. He's taken it way too literally and he's mm-hmm. become a killer. Mm-hmm. And he's actually murdering all of... There the, it is. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. All of her other potential lovers. Yeah. And ultimately, she, the only reason they fig- that she figures out it's not Will mm. is when Kevin James targets Will himself. Mm-hmm. And the two of them have to fight him off and you know, he ends up dead, surely. Yeah. And... Uh, Maybe that rekindles their relationship. Yeah, I like it. Mm. I like it. Mm. That's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. End of story twist as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking classics like slasher horror, you know, thriller movie. Yeah. So that, I was thinking that could be like Hitchcock. <laughs> you know, very good. Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah, yeah Psycho. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have one more. One more. In this one, again, this is based on the fact that Hitch in this movie seems to spend a huge amount of money. Mm on all of these pranks and all of these stunts like, and I'm like where is this money going from mm-hmm. where is this money coming from yeah so I'm thinking like a sequel in which again he stays with Ava Mendes they're a couple whatever mm-hmm. they're happily together for a few years and then he goes bankrupt right okay his business goes bankrupt because he's spending and maybe there's like a scene where Kevin James again is his yes mm-hmm. Kevin James Kevin James is, <laughs> is his accountant and he's like what happened how could I possibly have lost all this money and Kevin James is like dude this is why. And he's just like, you, you're spending, <laughs> you're buying puppies every time you get a new campaign. You know? yeah. It's like you, you're renting out jet skis. Mm-hmm. You're not financially responsible. And he's fully broke. Mm. But he can't bring himself to tell Ava Mendes. Mm-hmm. He just, he's too ashamed and embarrassed. He thinks that she won't want him anymore. Like, yeah. even, even now, he still doesn't trust her to love him for him. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if the money's gone, she'll leave me. Yeah. So he weaves this whole like deception where he has to like find another job and like maybe the jobs he gets are incredibly like what kind of job could he get like as a secret job when he's still pretending to be a date doctor like he's still pretending to be a date doctor yeah he's not told her that anything's changed so right okay um does it matter not particularly I don't know it could be anything yeah but he, he, he has to take a second job and he won't I'm thinking like the, the storyline is that gets a job as a teacher let's move this into a high school sure okay that always adds some extra flavour yeah. yeah yeah he gets a job as a teacher and you know then he's like the cool teacher who like yeah. you know, teaches the kids all about and then he solves all the kids dating problems mm, that's it maybe he starts off and he feels like this is not the job for me no. like I'm not I, this is such a step down I don't oh, I'm so it. bored of teaching maths yeah, ex- and then and then because one of the kids likes him, the, the, the kid comes in and is like, "Sir, I'm having a really hard time. Like, I, I I just fancy Sarah, but like she just won't notice me." Yeah, and you know, actually, this could be the perfect venue for his talents because when he's teaching like forty year old adults, and mm. he's like, "Listen to women's conversations. Don't just look at their boobs. Mm-hmm. Spend have some attention. Pay some interest in them." And it's like, "Yeah, you guys should have learned this already." Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if it's teenage boys this is actually good advice mm-hmm. that actually, you know, it's the right time for them to be hearing mm. it. Yeah. So maybe it turns out he's a great teacher mm-hmm. and he actually does really well and he thrives and he teaches all the, he really turns around all these like student teen boys and helps mm. them to be better and more respectful to all the girls in the class. You know, he ha- maybe there's some that, are, you know, he gets some couples together. It's lovely. But also his final test is to be honest with his own wife and come clean. Yeah. And that is like the final thing that he has to do he has to overcome in order to maybe yeah maybe that's the thing that he's trying to teach he, he teaches the kids he just says something like above all else be honest be honest don't ever lie to a woman they always find out and yeah. he's like oh dear yeah <laughs> whoops <laughs> blows up in his face a bit yeah. yeah okay I like it yeah do you have a title for that one uh no so it's Hitch 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 teacher Hitching 101 Hitching 101 there we go yeah, yeah. It's not like hitching with your thumb; it's hitching. Yeah. No, it's. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, I, I did have one more idea, but I think that it's not. It might not go anywhere, and we may have just kind of done it. It's a prequel expanding on Will Smith in high school, how he transitioned from awkward nerd to knowing everything about dating women. Okay. 
But of course, I would like, you know, present day, like 60 year old Will Smith or whatever he is mm-hmm. playing high school. Oh, so he's still doing his Fresh Prince yeah. like flash prep. Yeah. But like he's even older now. But sure. It, yeah, so yeah. it's just great. Mm-hmm. He can still pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> In his own head. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything there? So what he goes, what's the story? <clears throat> it's a prequel. It, it, yeah. It's like how he learns to uh, uh, get so good at dating women. So it's like the in, in between. So there's the flashback in the original film mm-hmm. where he gets his heart broken by Cressida. Um, yeah. So yeah, maybe it, it's it's like the, it, the college years or something or like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's Will Smith learning who taught him how to be a woman, an expert in dating. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's someone who's, you know, even older and cool than him. Maybe it's like Denzel Washington. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. There it is. He's like the ultimate guy who gets girls way out of his league because yeah. he just knows how to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. But I'd also like it to be Steve Buscemi dressed as like a young hip teacher. Yeah, so you're doing the whole thing. <laughs> Hello, young people. Yeah, that's part of his game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay, very good, very good. I like it. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Um, right, okay, so that's uh, what me and John have come up with. Let's see what the listeners have got. Indeed. Uh, Jacob Cutler has come up with a similar thing to you. Hitchcock. It's a mix between Will Smith's Hitch. And Will Smith's Hancock. Ah. But it's made by Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, wow. That's, so that's bringing a lot of different influences mm-hmm. to the table. Sure. Like it. Very yeah, good. that totally works. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe not, but <laughs> in theory. Yeah. Um, Switch. Okay. It's Hitch, but the Swingers edition. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Hitch 2, Hitch has a glitch. Hitch has a glitch. Oh, that's from Lilo and Stitch, right? Yes. Okay. Hitches get stitches. Hitches get stitches. That's is, I like it, is it like that. a cage fighting, like Fight Club kind of thing? I'd like to think that more he hitches the wrong couple and gets and, and accidentally makes enemies with like the mob. Oh, okay, yeah. He gets like a mob do- like a, a high ranking mobster's daughter mm. together with a guy who the mob do not want her to be with. Yeah. And then he... <gasps> it's the it's it's it, it's with the wrong mob. They do a whole Romeo and Juliet thing. Yes. Romeo and Ju- Oh Romeo and Juliet. What are the is that not what I said? You said Romeo and Juliet. I thought you meant Romeo and Michelle's High School Union. Oh, like, no. When I, would you have watched that? Okay. No, I, I just slurred my words. Okay, fine. Yes. Um, Great. Yeah, so, so like two mobs who are on opposing sides. Yeah, he gets... The, yes, he gets... He, the, he, he inadvertently gets them together. And so, yes, fantastic. Hitches get Stitches, but there's this whole Romeo and Juliet thing going on at the same time. I love it. Uh, Jason Roberts says, get Hitch or die trying. That's good, yeah. Hitch perfect. Hitch perfect. Like Pitch an, perfect, yeah. An acapella group falls for one girl. <laughs> A whole acapella group falls oh, for one girl. God. Will Smith doesn't believe they should all fall for the same person, so he's got to decide who to help. <laughs> okay, that, that could be good, yeah. Yeah. That could tie in with the teacher thing, where he's teaching the acapella class. Yeah, 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 totally. Mm. Okay, so the last one I've got here from Debashish Mahapatra. Okay. I've done my best right there. Sure, um, Has pitched, old man hitch. Will Smith is old, retired, and living alone. He gets hired for one more last hitch mission. One last hitch with blind old Kevin James. Oh, okay. So the two of them are... But, but what's a hitch mission? As in to get... To, to get a girl. To get, to get Kevin James, like, a, a, a wife. Another wife, even though he's, like, 80 and blind. Yeah. Okay, so it's... The I, mean, actual... I mean, maybe Will Smith goes for an 80, a blind 80-year-old. Yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope it's not another, like, 20-year-old. That'd yeah. be weird. But yeah, yeah. no, I like the, the, the same plot, but everyone involved is in an old people's home. That's yeah. actually quite fun. Yeah. Okay, I like that. But, like, it's still the same actors, so they would probably have to be aged up. Yes, sure, yeah. Which would be fun in that could be ent- That could be quite entertaining, actually. Mm. Okay, some good stuff there. Very good. Mm-hmm. I have some as well. Jonathan Acosta said, Ditch, Will Smith encourages people to get divorced. Uh-huh. Um, and Steve Liu followed up on this. It'd be Will Smith convincing the toxic or abusive partner to initiate the divorce, thus freeing him to hit on the innocent party who's left behind. It's so, like his whole plan is to convince married couples to get divorced, but he's mm-hmm. convincing the bad partner to dump the good partner, mm-hmm. and then when the good partner's heartbroken, he swoops in. Yeah, yeah. Disgusting, but it could work, yeah. <laughs> Dennis Fanning said, Hitch 2, International Dateline. Mm. Hitch is launching the most daring dating app in history with a promise of a million matches by New Year's Eve. All right. Having over-promised, Hitch must get on the street to get people on <laughs> dates or the mob will take his knees. <laughs> it's the uncut gems of rom-coms. Wow, okay. Very good. Connor Crehan said, Hitch 2, son of a hitch. Mm, he yeah. says, that's pre- he's pretty sure that was a Parks and Rec joke. He's just stolen back. But, mm. yeah. John Cowsig said, which hitch? When a kinder and non-goateed hitch appears, hitch discovers that he might be the evil universe hitch. <laughs> so, like, which nice. hitch? Yeah, yeah. Dave McCormick said, snitch, in which Will Smith's character is really in the witness protection program, but gosh, you just can't help matchmaking. Mm. Charles Decker said, pitch. 
Hitch pitches pitch sequel ideas. Nobody else knew that he was filming them. So <laughs> Great. very, very meta for us, yeah. Uh, I think you might have already had this one, but Joe Herman said, Hutch, Will Smith builds a really nice cabinet for his collection of China. Nice. Ian Mitchell said, Hitched, he's married and it's a boring movie about him not feeling like a man anymore because he's tied down. Meanwhile, Kevin James has uh, split up with the rich lady and is having a great time being single. Mm -hmm. And they both learn a valuable lesson in the end. Ian Mitchell also said his alternative answer is Switch, a body swap movie in which Kevin James and Will Smith switch bodies and have to learn to deal with that. All right. That could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Over on Twitter, at SocksLad said, itch. Nuff said. So, <laughs> instead of itch, it's itch. And finally, Black Girls Do Stuff, at BLK Girls Do Stuff said, Hitch is back on the market after a long relationship. Now he's the one who needs help in this new age of digital dating and social media. Makes that sense. That be fun. Like he's, he's like lost his touch. You know, he's yeah. a bit older now. He's not really as with it anymore. Yeah. And he needs a bit of help. Maybe from, you know, a young... Orange, you know, or something. I feel like Hitch would be a good name for a social media app. It would, I'm surprised. Well, there's Hitch. is it Hinge? I feel like there is a dating app called Hinge or something. Yeah, but that's not Hitch, is it? It's no, I'm just saying it's maybe that's what's sparking in your brain. Okay. Yeah, but like Hitch, because like it's, you know, get hitched, isn't it? Sure, yeah. Like, I mean, it's a big promise. I mean, who's that Who's that desperate to get married in this day and age? Yeah. I don't know, but there's so many dating apps out there. True. Okay, well, look, if you want to, if you want to you know, invest in it. No. Mm, fine. No, can't be asked. No. It's the story of your life. It's too hot. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everybody for those sequel ideas. We ask for your listener submissions every week a few days before we record by putting posts out on Facebook and Twitter where you can post your ideas. So make sure you like and follow our pages if you don't want to miss out. To listen to more episodes of Beyond the Box Set, you can subscribe and browse our back catalogue on any podcasting platform, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and many others, all of which you can also leave us a five-star review if you like. It really helps us to find new listeners. We're also available on Patreon, which is exclusively for the people who would raise us more than five stars if they could. You can find all those links in the description below or at beyondtheboxset.com. Mm-hmm. And next week, mm-hmm. Harry. Well, we've already done a uh, a bad hit of Will Smith's mm-hmm. that he was pretty good in. We've done a good hit of Will Smith's that was ultimately still a bad film. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But would you say it's a good film? No, I would say it's a questionable film. Yeah. I'm going to do something that I reckon is unquestionably a good film. Okay, okay. But we'll have to wait and see because I haven't seen it for a fair few years. Fair enough. And uh, it was well received. I am legend. I, I knew we'd get to this at some point. Yeah, cool. I am legend. I've seen it. I like it. Again, not seen I've, it in about ten years. Yeah, same. Yeah. So I, I, who knows? A lot I don't remember about this. Who knows? Okay, great. Well, that sounds like a good pick. Yeah. So thank you very much, listeners. Join us next week for I am legend. Yeah. See you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. It's kind of ridiculous and vaguely pathetic.